I've been waiting for this one. Hi, right, everyone, and I am Christopher the Casera Shriver to welcoming you here to PT Race TV. And tonight, for the very first time, the showcase of the infamous, the famous short track here in North Carolina, Hickory Motor Speedway is now at last on PT Racing TV. I got it. I am the Crusader once more. Once as we get to the set, we're getting ready for the action. Eight drivers in the Pushing Limits Racing League have come forth. To take challenge in this ball ring style formation track. A track that commands respect and demands you abide by its rules. We're about to see some Super League models go at it. Here on the pole, we'll see the Rattlesnake Robert Conn in the sixth is outside. That'll be Chantel. The throttle bottle in the five. Run number two is going to be Eric G. Gann. The 51 is outside. It's Wally Babs. The 099. Row three, we'll see Nick Earn in the 66 is at, 69. Excuse me, it is outside. It'll be Ron Manns in the number eight. Row four, final starters. Matthew Hart for the 84 that is outside. Jeffrey Dots ups in the 72. You want to talk about a track that's going to make you have to really corner off and really keep your momentum alive? This is definitely it. This is a rhythm style track. It is not, it is a short track basis, short track laying field. You have got to stay focused and got to stay under the corners and under control. And there's only one line to hit, really. It's a one-line track, but that doesn't mean you can't make more grooves. You just better know when to catch them. Because around here, that's not exactly easy to do. Green flag is out, and he lasts the distance at Hickory. And already you can just see how tight and convoluted these drivers are going to be all day long here as they lead them off the corners of turn one and two. It is the rubber, as the rattlesnake Robert Kahn with the advantage while Chantel the throttle puddle tries to gain up on him. The 51 of Eric G. Gann, the only RC controller and driver known in iRacing. Fighting it out here with the 099 of Wally Babb and that. And it looks like Nick Kern, the 69. You can see Babb trying to get up something on the outside. Unfortunately for him, though, there's not a lot of run up there. Let's just say that. Now, that's not to say you can't get something dialed up on that top shelf, but, you know, the one thing is, if you go any lower than that second line, you might as well consider your momentum lost to the end of time because that bottom lane is the only grip you get, and that's the only spot you can get a runoff on. It's an extremely tough track. It's very challenging. You're turning left a lot here more than anything else. You can even see just the onboard camera here of Hoffer. Look at how much that wheel is turning in. And this is just on the, that was on the turn. Now look on the straights. Look how much he's still turning that thing around. He's not getting it straight whatsoever. He's got to keep a close eye on it throughout this, throughout this race and throughout this run in order to stay focused in. We go on board here with the number five Chantel Toronto Pottle, one of our lone Canadian drivers trying to knock down the Rattlesnake Robert Kahn in practice. 
She was up there with the top guys here. Khan and Gan were the number two up on one and two, and then she was the third fastest when they came to a conclusive end. But, you know, so far she seems to be hanging in there still and putting on a little bit of a decent showing for herself. 6-9, Nick Kern, the Mopar machine, staying down low. Stay, so let's see where this one goes. Meanwhile, Wallybab struggles to keep his speed and position in line and in key. Ron Mann's the number eight machine. We get to see him back out on PT Racing TV. The first, I think, is the only second time we've ever seen him here. He's hanging back here with Jeffrey Todd Tuss while Todd kind of just lays in wait, kind of staying out of trouble, if you will. But this just gives you another good representation. Again, not really hitting the throttle as hard as other drivers, but you can see Ron. He's having to really corner in and really keep himself under control and in pace because it's so difficult to keep that car straight, much less keep it online. That's why it's really one of the toughest tracks you'll see point blank on any of these series these drivers will run. It's a perfect setup. You got the Super Late models on a track that is designed to really challenge you and make you really think about every position and every key element to this racing. I've only got two wins here from the officials on this track, and I'll tell you, they're just trying to knock these guys down and trying to get ahead of them, as you said and done. A fast qualifying time could mean the difference between a win or a loss, and Robert the Rouse and Khan has shown exactly why that is, but remember, they're doing 80 laps around here, and those tires, yeah, they're going to take a bit of a beating out there. Let's just say that. It takes about 20, 25 laps, and the next thing you know, you're pretty much full throttling and off the corners, but you can still slip and slide a little bit. Doesn't mean you'll have a lot of grip, just means you'll be able to give it a little more RPMs under the hood. That, and you, right now, Eric Gan trying to hold off Nick Kern here. Kern, one of the fastest guys out on the track. And the Mopar 69 machine. What a season he's had under the hood and a career he's been making for himself on PT Racing TV. Strong contender on the dirt, but when he gets on the asphalt and the road courses, you best watch out. The road courses are where this man plays king to. Now, granted, this isn't a road course kind of style track, but this is something I would feel like kind of exemplifies what he wants to do, which is more or less based on how he corners and how he tightens the track up. He is very good at that, and he's been showing that all the time. Joe Glover coming on board, driving off with a 0.99. Wally Babb here still hanging in there with the team. Go on board here with him as he tries to gain up on Matthew Hopper. Now you may see some done your manufacturers on these cars. Obviously, you see the Pontiac, grand damn style there on the 099. Little throwback scheme, but uh, just be aware, even the little Charger and the Chevrolet right behind them, these are not fully manufactured cars. These are super late models. They are designed a specific way, a certain way. The only thing, you, the only reason you even have a different front end on those things is just because you're looking for, you're just kind of looking for looks on your manufacturer. Go on board here with Robert Kahn here. We're going to take a look in here and just see that distance that he is gaining off of Chantel Pottles trying to catch him here. Kahn's being extremely smart though. You can see he's just kind of laying on, laying off. He's not trying to over exemplify that motor. He's just trying to get himself a nice rhythm. A rhythm here at, at Hickory is your saving grace. That is the key thing to use when you're running out on a track like this. Matthew Hoffer, the 84, good red service, trying to cane back up, trying to get a few of these guys off. I talked with him earlier today. He said, I'm glad we're back here in the Super League Miles, and I'm glad we are at Hickory because I've been wanting to race this track for a long time. He said he's more of a wheel and modify kind of guy with this track, but, oh, as the 51 gets a little bit of that, of that irony of what Hickory brings to the table, you drive it too hard, you get the wall. He drove it right up, wheels go high into the fence, manages to bring it down somewhat, but unfortunately for him, Matthew Hoffert does not play fiddle. He takes the lead. he takes over that spot for him. Now I was just about to say, like, he's more of that open wheel kind of style background, but he certainly is showing some of these fenders here, keeping them all controlled. Gone now, starting to gain more ground there on the number five. Chantel Pottle still trying. To combat some injuries, got told earlier today she is fighting a few injuries down there. She is still hanging in there, trying to do what she can, though, with her team and with her crew. Well, Cray or Cray's do, obviously, still fighting some nagging injuries and keeping that five machine up ahead. 
The RKM set up RBR machine trying to get the number six Valvoline car up of Robert Kahn. Yeah, obviously there's not nearly as many cars as I thought there really should be for Hickory, but I think that kind of just goes for the expression. Sometimes more is not necessarily needed. If you get good quality, that's what you're after. So quantity over quality, depending on how you look at it. Personally to me, if you have 30 cars on this track, then you got enough right there. That's a perfect race in my opinion. Get them stuck in lap traffic and have to figure out how to fight for themselves. That's kind of how the bull ring style tracks are. They really just want 20 or 30 cars out on the track and just let them loose. Personally, 25 or 30 is probably the limit. I'd say probably 25 is probably the best bet. That'd be like a perfect race right there. Just let them go out and see if they can hold the line. Who goes high, who goes where, who goes what, and who can survive. Of course, we know that uh, the LA Coliseum is coming to iRacing in that quarter mile track. I'm still not really sure how to feel about that. That should either be a good, that's either going to be good or it's going to be really bad. Depending on how you look at it. I look at it this way. We've already got Hickory, so I mean, we don't need to worry too much about the short track dilemma, but I'm still waiting for Super Slinger Speedway to come on board here at iRacing. Why have we not even got that one in yet? You want to talk about another short track that deserves to be put on here? Slinger is. Definitely way up into the clouds there. Back crowd on hand right now, still watching in with us here. Remember, we do have one more broadcast coming your way here tonight. Of course, the Green Mountain Grill Fast and Fun Truck Series will be presented down here tonight at New Hampshire Bar Speedway. Be sure to check that out here on the Magic Mile is in action. If you guys do miss any of the action, though, do not worry. It will all go to YouTube, so you will be seeing this action and then some put onto our YouTube platform right after the race so if you do want to check it out be sure to subscribe there to see all the great content and you'll never miss a beat some bumpers being tested and some rhythms being pushed that's the thing about short track racing you gotta put a fender to them here or there I'll tell you one thing it sucks to be on the receiving of the fender but I mean at the end of the day depending on how you are as a driver you either look at it as yeah I had that coming or man I wish I didn't get it but it was what it was what it was or that third driver, kind of like what Hamlin is, and just was like, man, I ain't having it, which I don't blame him, but at the same time, it's short track racing, baby. That's all you can do. Ron Mann's managing to make his way around the number 72. Jeffrey Todd Tufts. Todd trying to get some speed back in, but you can see he is struggling a slight bit here. Now, Todd in practice was seemingly okay. He looked like he had something kind of figured out down there. Unfortunately, though, right now, the LPT pallet machine is not up to the standard I think he is drawing for himself. Eric T. Gann got into the wall protection earlier, managed to bring it back up, and is ahead of Wally Babb by about 3.7 seconds. Wally Babb's trying to get something going here and put the Camel Pontiac Grand Am up ahead and back into the fight, but again, without cautions, not a whole lot you can do about it. No, con no competition cautions, anything like that around here. You race your race. That is all you can do. Todd Tufts entering into pit road. Looks like he might need to fix a few things up on the hood. We'll go on board here with Nick Hearn. Wybab also going into pit road. So it looks like maybe a little bit of damage on that right side. Yep. I was about to say, I don't think fuel mileage-wise they need to worry about that. I think they're okay on fuel. I looked at the pit stops here. They had about 50% of fuel they could use. Oh, Ron Mann's going into pit road as well here. All right, maybe I am completely wrong. I, I was driving there driving them earlier, and I didn't think they fell a little off track to not get pit fuel. I think I may be horribly wrong. It looks like there will be pit stops required. Oh, and the five cent out bottle driving a little too hard out of turn four. Frustration's definitely building up as Robert Kahn continues to just spread apart from her. But with three drivers having to go into pit road here, you gotta wonder, you know, will any of these guys have to really think about going in later on? That's up front. Well, Nick Hurd's gonna think about it now. He's going in. Entering into pit road here, we'll see him. Maybe that comes back to haunt him if he can stay ahead of the curveball here. Robert Kahn, though, still your race leader. Kahn's going to accentuate that thing out, and I don't think he wants to worry about going into pit road until he absolutely has to. We 
Well, I just get a look at this track here, man. This is an incredible facility, beautiful place. It is a lot, like I said, it may not seem like much, but it is a lot to many drivers out here. Many big names were created here. Many big names have raced here. The likes of the, of the Earnhardt, Dale Jr., Gary Earnhardt, even, even, even family members of them that became friends. Many of the top got many some top guys here that have joined in the Super League Models division. I believe some got some names that come to mind, like the Bushes have raced here, the Elliots and all them. They they've definitely come through in Hickory, North Carolina, and this track. This is a place that if you're a Super League Model fan, or if you're a late model driver fan, or even stock car fan, this is a great place to put your test to and really test your strength and your speeds, while also Trying to see who is the better driver out on the parts. Last winding down right now. Four seconds behind of the Rattlesnake Rubber Con. The five Chantel Powell has got damage though. She, well, she is fighting some injuries, but man, this is not looking good for her. She's got to start getting some going here. Wally Bab is on the attack, and so is Todd Tubbs trying to get their laps back. Remember, they are a lap down at the moment. Todd Tufts and Wally Babb all trying to make a move off the five, but even with the front, with those burnt tires, the five still somehow manages to be ahead of, fast of them and ahead of them. Maybe a little bit of that strategic strategy she's always had in the Super League models. We know she is a tough cookie when it comes to trying to knock anybody down on the list. Todd Tufts now looking to possibly dive it in low and go for the run here. Can't seem to find an opening. You can see the five is struggling to turn in and he's fucking to find speed. That's the danger you find yourself in around these parts. Matthew Hoffer now gaining some ground because of Todd Tusk kind of slowing down the field here a little bit. Hoffer might be able to bring back a little bit more momentum. He's trying to charge ahead. He was saving up for a little that later run. He is a hard charge of the night though, nevertheless up four spots. And I don't think I need to remind anyone at home about the wars that 84 of Matthew Hoffert and the five Chantel Pottle have put each other through time and time again. We've seen what these two drivers will do to each other if they catch them. Well, at the moment, they only are running two and three. The Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn, five second gap. And I really am still questioning when is he going to go into pit road because, again, you can only stay out for so long. I don't think he's got enough fuel to last him out the entire time. I thought they did, but it looks like I was kind of judging Ron because Ron Mann's Wally Babb taught us. Even Nick Kern went in, and Kern actually, he's actually even worse in position. He is dead last at the moment, struggling to keep up. Ron Mance now in the number eight, right now moving ahead here of the field. He gets his lap back there from Aaron G. Gann, still two laps down. Unfortunately, though, G Gann, Poffert, Pottle, Khan have not gone into pit road just yet. They are opting not to. They are, set, they are currently talking with their spires and trying to work each other out, see what they can do here. And yeah, with 19 laps left to go, anybody's guess who's going to take this one home. Kern looking for a little bit of a momentum boost here, a little bit of a speed demon-like time of setup here. You can see how tight and compact these setups are, and how they have to work, how they have to keep each other in play. All drivers using these harness devices, using the seats, helps them stay safe and stays under control and out of trouble. Obviously, they do their job and they do them well. And even some folks around here on the iRacing community have literally been able to manufacture them themselves and actually make it very similar in many regards. Kern being a little bit conservative right now. I would have thought by now he would have gave the five the bumper and got her out of the way, but he's being awfully conservative. I know he's quite a few laps down, but I mean, if I was him, I would not be trying to lay off as much as we are here. 14 laps remain. Well, I think if anything, Khan's going to go the distance. He's really going to try for the extremes. But if he does run out of fuel, here's the downside. Shenzel Bottle and Matthew Hoffer will just catch him, and that could take away every advantage he had. 
That fuel run has been testing them all day long and has been and has been in the back of their minds, but now is not the time to be thinking about that for say the least. That Mark Martin number six Valvoline style the machine there. Very obviously a very well regarded and well remembered car out there. Now personally I never grew up with Mark Martin, but I can say that uh I have watched a lot of his stuff later on, and I can say for sure that um, I wish I knew about him before. He's a respectful guy, and I loved hearing from him. It was great to see him get a little shout out there from Alex Bowman last night at Martinsville. So kudos to him for that. Here we go, 10 laps remain. You know, for an E lap race, this really felt like nothing, to be honest with you. This seemed like this was pretty much just a go and gone. Kind of moment here. I'm not even sure really if we should have been ending it here. This seems awfully short for a race like this. Whoa! Speaking of awfully short, looks like Wally Bear cutting him. Ties a little short with the rattlesnake. I don't know if Khan's going to appreciate that one too much. Wally Bab dived down low and said, hey, bud, let's see where this one goes. And instead, Khan had him put back a spot. Bab trying to get his run off. If there's a slight chance or a hope that something happens, he thinks it could happen here. He's looking for it. Up Irish Intel bottle still dealing with that number 69 of the of Nick Kern. The field the burn camp right now. Just doing everything he can to stay within reach, stay within run distance here, but he's not gonna try and test the five's patience here. Six remain. Kern down low here, a little thunders being smacked in the back and smacked in the sides. That is heavy damage on Eric G. Gant here. That right side is badly broken up. You can see the fender taking a little bit of a lick or two there. No worries for me. That would honestly just be a normal runoff here. Kern gets an opening for the five and takes full advantage. Now almost a six second lead for the Rattlesnake and the Throttle Bottle. Five up high last time. Four remain to go. Unreal, folks. This has just been an absolute beatdown. I know there's not as many drivers as I thought there really should be for Hickory, but nevertheless, there is still a sizable field that put on a show, and the Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn, looking to walk away with this one, he hands down. Coming out the clutches down through two to go. What's time by? We'll see which one takes this wall. Can Khan finish it out? We've seen crazier things happen here on PT Race TV. There is no saying anything here until he crossed that checkered flag. Turn four of the 099 of Wally Bab is going to be in the way as the white flag comes up. This next time by we trade white, we go checkers. Down the back straightaway. Out of turn three and four. Straight to the finish line. Robert the Rattlesnake Khan wins at Hickory. Coming away, second place will be Chantel Throttle Pottle. Third goes to Matthew Hofford. Fourth, Eric G. Gann. Fifth will be Wally Babb. Sixth will go to Ron Manns. Nick Kern managing to pull away with seventh. Eighth goes Jeffrey Tatus rounding out your field. There he is, your race winner at Hickory, ladies and gentlemen. The Rattlesnake strikes again, and on a track we've never seen before. Whoa. Little celebration here down in the crew. The Rattlesnake can sleep another one off here, and I know we didn't have my friend uh, Kenneth Crawford coming on by to tune this one, but... We'll see him next week out, though, thankfully. But here is your race results popping up on your screen. Battle results from Pushing Limits Racing League presents Robert Kahn, the runner, at Hickory. Second going to Chantel, throttle bottle. Third to Matthew Hoffert. Fourth to Eric G. Gann. Fifth to Wally Babb. Sixth to Ron Manns. Seventh to Nick Kern. And eighth to Jeffrey Todd Tufts. That will round out your eight drivers here tonight. Let's take it down and have a listen with our field of drivers in this championship running. Let's take a listen to the top three. All right, race fans, he now comes to us here as your race winner in victory lane. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in the Rattlesnake, Robert Kahn. And uh, 
Gone, man. You had a lot of work to do out of the start to hold the field back, but nevertheless, you got a good jump. Managed to keep your car stable and at and play, and uh, the throttle just couldn't hang in there, unfortunately. And I might be having technical difficulties on my end here, so hold on a minute. That's one thing you gotta love about this broad. That's one thing you gotta love about live television, folks. Okay, Con, can you hear us? Yeah, we still can't hear him, unfortunately. <laughs> and the Kurt is out there having a little fun. He's just like, hey, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not going to be able to see this place for a while. I want to have a little fun here. Con, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your race winner once more. It is the Ralph Snake Robert Con. And uh, Con, like we said a minute ago, had to pretty much charge this one up and get all the speed you built in. And nevertheless, you held down the throttle, and Chantel could not keep up with you this time. Yeah, she was she was fast. Um, lap traffic, I think, really hurt us, like for slower cars and um, and a little bit faster cars, because I she was catching me towards the end. <clears throat> but um, just lucky, just consistent night. So happy to happy to win one. It's been a while. For sure, there I know a lot of uh, a lot at stake here and a lot that was really playing out for you and your team. But nevertheless, you are walking away with the W here at Hickory for the first time on P3's TV. So who do you want to thank you for this one? I want to thank I thank you for what you do. I thank uh, people who watch watch us, um, like my brother watches us, Kenji, and everyone who tunes in and races and is a part of this big thing. And I uh, appreciate everybody. For sure there. Whatever us, Ralph Snake, congratulations on your win, and we will see you next time when the green flag flies, sir. Thanks, man. Take. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner, the Ralph Snake, Robert Kahn. I do not believe Chantel will be joining us in here. I believe she is having a little bit of those nagging injuries still bothering her. So we will give her the second place finisher overlay here. Congratulations to her and the crew, though. Certainly was a great showing from her. I don't know if we'll hear from Matthew Hoffert. He may be a little bit uh, tired out. I think this race might have overdone him a little bit. But we'll give him a minute or two here. We'll give him the overlay, though. And race fans, again, if you're tuning out, well, don't go too far. We have one more race coming your way. Here tonight on PT Racing TV, when we see the drivers from the Green Mountain Grills machines coming on out, that'll be over at the mall, at the New Amsterdam Motor Speedway here in a minute. But first, let's talk with Matthew Hofford as he joins us in. He now comes with us here all the way from our good friends down in the North Carolina region. Hofford, man, this uh, was a lot of work for you in the crew here, but he managed to pull off the top three, nevertheless, for charging up to the front. Yeah, yeah, happy for the top three. I'm um, getting on the podium with... Uh... Chantel and and uh, Robert and that was uh, that was a fun track. It was it was it was fun to make my way through the back and get up to third and hold third place for the rest of the race. Sure, there I know you uh, really was kind of testing everything out and really giving yourself a lot of time to breathe. But you seem to figure out how to get around lap traffic as much as you can, stay out of trouble. Uh, how hard was it to really do that? Much less even keep yourself in play. Well, I kind of have a little. I had a little tactic there, um, kind of put the pressure on and uh, just wait for a mistake. And uh, once they made a mistake, around I went and uh, worked out in my favor a couple times. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, though, my friend, you are walking away with a third-place finish and another podium in the Super Late Miles division. Who do you want to thank you for this one? Oh, uh, PTM Racing TV, excellent broadcasting week to week. Uh, everyone that came out and raced tonight, um, pushing limits racing league. And everyone watching at home, thank you. And uh, looking forward to next week. We do it as well, my friend. Congratulations here, and it's great to have you back on board. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your top three finisher here tonight, Matthew Hoffert. That's going to wrap it up here at Hickory Moore Speedway. And, uh, oh, man, I really wish we didn't have to leave this place. Can we just stay here, please? Can we just let's stay a little longer? No? All right, fine. All right, we're going to New Hampshire Moore Speedway. I'll see you guys there in just a little bit. Thank you for tuning in. See you there in a little. We'll see you here in a little. Look.